This is part two of the reflection on the panel discussion at the UN Geneva Library about multilateralism that took place a few weeks ago. Professor Dr. Alfred Desayas, a Catholic, American lawyer and historian, spoke with me about the UN and about multilateralism. Pope Francis said, and I quote, an indispensable condition for the success of multilateral diplomacy is the goodwill and good faith of the parties, their readiness to deal with one another fairly and honestly, and their openness to accepting the inevitable compromises arising from disputes. Now, does this um, reflect the reality of the United Nations today? Unfortunately not. In my 40 years working as a staff member of the Office of the High Commission for Human Rights, as an independent expert for the Human Rights Council, as president of a major NGO, as a member of numerous other NGOs that interrelate with the office and with the United Nations all the time, I have seen so much, so much bad faith. I have seen uh, so much lying, so much uh, corrupting of terms that uh, it's going to be difficult uh, to have efficient multilateralism uh, if people are always trying to take advantage of the other and when they are intransigent and refuse any kind of compromise. I've seen that again and again. And uh, the media, unfortunately, becomes the sounding board of government officials who are putting out fake news, fake law, in order to have fake diplomacy. So that is one of the obstacles we have to deal with. Despite these obstacles, multilateralism has a long history, but it is principally associated with the era after World War II, during which there was a blooming of multilateral agreements led primarily by the United States. Today, for most states in the world, multilateralism and collective cooperation are the only options for the effective pursuit of their foreign policy objectives and the realization of their national interests. Multilateralism is essential for countries big and small. This is what we believe in. And um, it is essential for the reasons international cooperation. It brings peace for security, for a rules-based economic order, for social progress, which is very close to our hearts, and for protection and promotion of human rights, for maintaining cultural diversity, food security, all these are reasons which makes multilateralism very important, especially for small island developing states. We will have a voice in the multilateral fora only if we can go along with international cooperation. In the multilateral forum of the UN Geneva, the presence of the Holy See, represented by the Nuncio, remains important and that he often uses his diplomatic skills to discuss with other members situations and topics that are, for example, significant to the Catholic Church. It's not going to be very easy, even for the nuncio, on friendly terms, uh, to change the situation, because even if he persuades the ambassador, the ambassador might even tell him, I agree with you, <laughs> but what do you want? What do you want me to do? I have orders, and that is what has made the multilateral system here uh, less effective. So it is something that, in your opinion, from your evaluation, is necessary. There is no substitute for that, correct? Correct. We cannot afford to have little bilateral agreements among the, the rich to exploit uh, the poor. And thanks for the non-governmental organizations that sometimes have the courage to tell governments they are wrong. And I'd like to end by reminding you of the words of our late Secretary General Kofi Annan, who said, and who liked to repeat it, that whether our task is fighting poverty, stemming the spread of disease, or saving innocent lives from mass murder, we have seen that we cannot succeed without the leadership 
of the strong and the engagement of all. The experts said that one needed to accept that multilateralism is not perfect, but that the alternatives would be worse.